YouTube, this is my video on wheel throwing at the introduction level. The goal of this video is to take you from never having been on the wheel before to making things like little cylinders or little bowls. It's a great way to learn the techniques and steps you need to get started. So if you already know how to make a cylinder pretty competently, maybe this video isn't for you, but in the future I will do a beginner level, intermediate level, and then some more specific demos like teapots and jars. Hopefully all of that will be down the line. But this is for people who either want to see how I teach pottery um, and my specific techniques, or for people who maybe just acquired a pottery wheel or just started in a new pottery class and are looking for some intro level tips. So before we even start on the wheel, we are going to have to wedge our clay and get it ready for throwing. So my advice with wedging is just keep trying, keep practicing. It's honestly not the worst thing in the world if your clay has air bubbles, but it is important that over time you get better at wedging. So I have a scale here in pounds and ounces, and I'm going to measure out roughly a pound and a half of clay. If you don't have a scale, don't worry about it. You can kind of think of it as like a slightly bigger than baseball amount of clay. Um, this right now is exactly one pound and eight ounces, which looks like this. I never played sports. Is this is this baseball size? I think it's like a softball size, I think. Really? I always thought softballs were really big, but I, 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 isn't like a softball like a grapefruit? Okay, I should just like stick to non-sport. <laughs> okay. It's okay, it's I like don't an, know either. It's like an orange. Yeah. Yeah. It's like or a- Or like an apple? I have, no, I have no idea. I, I don't like know what anything looks like, honestly. <laughs> I'm learning that I also don't know what anything looks like. Anyway, it's a pound and a half, one pound, eight ounces. As long as you're within that ballpark, I would say don't go under a pound, don't go over two pounds. Anywhere between one pound and two pounds is fine for a beginner. I actually did like a very brief wedging demo in my studio tour video, um, but I'll just run it by you again. I'm going to be teaching you how to do ram's head wedging. Ram's head is pretty much only good for smaller amounts of clay. If you're going anything above two pounds, you wanna learn spiral wedging. And if you guys wanna see a tutorial on that, I can do that later. But for now, I'm gonna take my little ball of clay and I'm going to make like an eagle with my hands, with my, my thumbs touching. My eagle is gonna go on top of my clay here. I'm gonna wrap my wings around it. I'm gonna press out and down, um, like my eagle is like dropping and diving first like some fish. I teach a lot of kids, so there's gonna be a lot of animal metaphors today, so just be prepared. The biggest mistake I see with wedging with beginners is that they think that they're kneading bread and they will go like this and like totally smear their clay. The point of wedging is to get air bubbles out and if I just smear my clay and then fold it over and smear it like this, I'm literally building like a catacomb of bubbles in my clay, which is no good. Make sure that when you're wedging, it's short movements, short controlled movements. You're basically churning the clay in like a little circle towards the edge of the table. If your clay starts to get really flat and wide like this, if it gets longer and longer, that means your palms aren't really holding the sides enough. A lot of people will wedge like this, like they're doing patty cake, and that will give you a long hot dog of clay, and that's not what you want. So, eagle on top, wings wrap around, press, and rotate, like so. This is what it looks like fast. You should start to see a distinction between the core of your clay and this tail that's sort of folding around and forming these little wrinkles. I think I would wedge maybe 15 to 20 times in one direction, and then to close it, I just roll that tail down around my little core here. I'm gonna flip it upright, and I'm gonna wedge it in that direction also, just so that we're mixing it in multiple directions. And then, I like to clap it into a nice round ball. You wanna make sure that there aren't big crevices on the bottom of your clay, because when you throw it down, if there's a big you know, cavern system here, it'll make air bubbles underneath your pot. So make sure you're nice and round, and you smack out any of those cracks. You want it to be pretty smooth. Like so, and now we're back into our 
apple, orange, grapefruit, softball, baseball shape. So if you're just starting to learn how to wedge, uh, I recommend cutting your clay in half after you think you're finished, and then you can check your work. The downside of this is that you do then have to wedge it again after you've cut it in half, but this will help train you to know like, oh yeah, this has been wedged enough versus this hasn't been wedged enough. So I'm gonna take my wire tool, um, especially if I'm checking it, I'll flatten it a little bit and then cut it through like the hamburger way. And then you can kind of just look at your cross section. I was just demoing wrong ways to wedge. So you can actually see some visible air bubbles here. I like to stretch it and bend it a little bit. And then some of those deeper air bubbles will sort of stretch out so you can see them. I've got a pretty deep air bubble and a crevice here. I got an air bubble here. Um, if your clay looks like this after you finish wedging, it probably means that whatever you did, you should have done a little bit more or maybe there's something off with your technique. If I threw with this, it really wouldn't be a problem. It would not explode, it wouldn't be difficult to throw with, but it just indicates that um, my wedging leaves a little bit to be desired. So on the other hand, if you cut your clay in half and stretch it out a little bit, and it looks like this with like a giant air pocket here, um, that means you really kind of need to go back and wedge it again. If I threw with such a big air pocket in it like this, it would be difficult to throw with. Okay, so if you wedged correctly, when you cut it in half the hamburger way, it should look like this. So you can see that there aren't any obvious dark spots the way it was before. And if I go and like stretch it, it's not revealing any like secret caverns or large pockets. So if you cut your clay in half and it looks like this, you are wedging correctly and your judgment on when you're done wedging is pretty good or at least on the right track. Okay, so now that we have a nice round wedged ball of clay, we can go to the wheel and actually start this demo. Before we start, I need you to know that there are truly infinite right ways to do this. Over my many years of teaching multiple age groups, I have just found that this specific demo is the best way to get a beginner to a cylinder making level. I'm of the opinion that the best way to throw is whatever works, right? If it gets the job done, I'm not going to fight anybody on how they do or don't do something. Some of the things I teach you today might click for you better than some of the things that your teachers have been telling you. And other things you might be, ah, oh, that's not for me. I like the way that I was originally taught. So feel free to take what you want and leave the rest. So the first step for a very brand new beginner who's never been at the wheel before that I think a lot of people skip is just posture and setup, okay? So when I sit down at the wheel, the first thing that I do is make sure my stool is scooted nice up and close against the wheel. If you're really tall, you can be a few inches further back than me, uh, but I pretty much want to be able to lean forward and have my head directly above the center of the wheel. The next thing I do is reach down and find my pedal. Different wheels have different pedal styles. If your pedal is attached to your wheel, skip this step, but if your pedal is free to move, um, you're gonna wanna grab that with your right hand and bring it nice and close to your body. Proper foot placement on your pedal is really important. I like to have my heel completely on the pedal with my toe sticking out over the top. Obviously, if you have giant feet, you will have more toe overhang. Um, I shouldn't say giant feet, that's kind of rude. Obviously, if your feet are bigger than mine, you will have toe overhang more so than me. The important part is having your heel completely on the pedal. It's gonna be really hard to use the pedal if your foot's all the way back here. You know, I can't really manipulate the pedal very well from here. The other thing that I like to do with these stools and wheels at this height is take my left foot and put it up on the ring of my stool here. You'll find that while you're doing pottery, you're gonna be leaning your elbows on your legs very often. And since I have little short stubby legs, um, if I leave my foot flat on the floor, I literally will have to lean so far down in order to get my elbow on my leg. Um, so if you're really tall and you don't need that, uh, then you can leave your foot on the floor. So your wheel is going to spin at a whole gradient of speeds, but I like to break it down into three basic speeds. You have your snail speed, uh, which you achieve by just pressing your pedal just the tiniest bit. Um, you have your medium speed, I like to call this dog speed. And if I completely floor it, 
get cheetah speed, the fastest speed. Uh, you really do not want to be spinning this fast while you're throwing unless you're checking if you're on center or if you're cleaning your wheel. So I'm just gonna take my pointer finger and rest it very lightly in the center of the wheel. This is your wheel head. Um, and you'll notice that as long as I keep my finger right in the center, it's actually very easy for me to keep my finger in place. It's kind of like the eye of the storm, right? But if I move my finger outside of center, I lose control of my hands pretty quickly. Uh, and that's gonna be the exact same experience for your clay. As long as you're smack dab in the center, it will be even and easy to work with, but even a slight shifting from the center will cause it to be very wobbly and unwieldy. So our goal today is to make sure that our clay stays smack dab in the center. So now that we know how the wheel works and how to sit at the wheel, we can actually start throwing. So I'm gonna take my ball of clay, hover it three or four inches above the center of the wheel, and when I'm ready, I'm gonna throw that down hard as close to the center of the wheel as I can. Now, as you can see, uh, I didn't nail it. It's not perfect. That's okay. As long as you didn't throw your clay like out a window or something, you're gonna be fine. Take the wheel, spin it just free until the ball of clay is closest to your body. Then you're gonna make a little snow shovel with your hands, get low, and just slide that clay into the center of the wheel. The more you set yourself up for success at the beginning, the less hard it's going to be later to get that clay center. Once we've pushed it into the center, we're going to do something called clapping on center. I'm gonna make my hands into a little triangle with my thumbs on top and kind of a 45 degree angle underneath my hands. As it spins at a snail speed, I'm going to smack my hands together firmly and quickly like so. until it forms a nice little molehill. You really wanna put a lot of oomph into this. If you have any like repressed anger, this is a good step to get that out. So once we have our little mountain here, it's got a nice peak on the top and the sides are nice and low to the bottom of the wheel without being too tall, uh, we're going to go ahead and seal it to the wheel. If any water gets in between our clay and the surface of the wheel, it's gonna slip and slide, it won't stick. So we wanna seal it so that no water gets underneath. I'm gonna take my right hand pointer finger and rest it at three o'clock. If the wheel were like a clock face, this is 12, three, six, nine. So I'm at three o'clock with my pointer finger and we're just gonna smear that clay down where it meets the wheel head. Now, if this is your first time touching clay, you're going to be very tempted to let the clay kind of drag you along with the spinning of the wheel. But the whole premise is that we stay put while the wheel sort of brings the clay underneath our hand for us. Once we're nice and sealed, we can reach into our bucket and grab our sponge. So as it spins, I'm gonna add some water onto my clay, just enough to cover it. You're going to want to add a little bit of water very, very often. Anytime it seems remotely dry or sticky, go ahead and add just enough water to coat. Now that we're sealed to the wheel and we have our water, we can actually do the first step of throwing it, which is coning up. I want this clay to look like an upside down ice cream cone. And to do that, I'm taking my right hand and I'm gonna make like a zero with my right hand. And that sponge is going to be pinched between my middle finger and thumb right in the center, like so. That's gonna go here at three o'clock. My left hand is going to hold the side of my clay with my entire palm touching. And at a medium speed, I'm gonna squeeze that clay and slowly travel up towards the ceiling. You wanna be pretty firm with this. You really have to sort of bully the clay and make it do what you want it to do. Um, so really lean in there with your body weight. Make sure your left hand is tilted slightly down. A lot of beginners will make this mistake of like kind of karate chopping their clay with like the side of their hand, but you wanna focus on the heel of your hand and the palm. So we're squeezing at the base and slowly traveling up. until we have our nice ice cream cone shape. A lot of mistakes I see when coning up involve coning up too quickly. So they do the, they do the quick hands, quick hands. And if you do this, um, all you're gonna get is a little poop emoji, okay? So make sure that your hands are traveling slowly in relation to the speed of your wheel. You can think of it this way. The wheel needs to make a full revolution before you move on from that spot or else the information you're giving the clay doesn't have a chance to make it all the way around symmetrically before you move on. Another common mistake I see with coning up is not starting at the very bottom. A lot of people will take their right hand and start like an inch up, and then you end up with a really wide flared out bottom, 
and it'll probably rip right about here. So make sure that when you cone up, you start at the very bottom. I like to press into the wheel with the tip of my finger, using that sponge as a shield. See how the base gets narrow and that edge is clean? And then I'm gonna cone up from there. Once we have our upside down ice cream cone, the next step is to cone down. And the new shape that we want is a tuna can or like a can of cat food. To make that happen, I'm gonna take my sponge in my right hand and make a fist. And that fist is gonna sit on top of our ice cream cone. If you make a fist right now with your hand and lift your thumb towards your face and then touch the back of your hand from your pinky knuckle to your wrist, you'll see that it's nice and flat and smooth. That's what we're going to be using to form the top of our tuna can. So sponge in hand, fist on top. My left hand is going to wrap around my ice cream cone with my thumb up in the air. A lot of beginners will wrap their whole hand around the clay um, and that can cause it to rip. So make sure that thumb stays up in the air and the fist goes on top. I'm gonna to push down with my right hand and squeeze with my left hand and bring that clay down little by little. Now you'll notice that my pinky knuckle is in the center of my clay. This line of my hand is more like a radius. A lot of people will go ahead with the diameter going all the way across, but you really just want that pinky in the center coming out at six o'clock. Another thing I see happen is people get the mushroom cap, okay, this flaring out portion. If that's you, you're getting the mushroom cap, you wanna squeeze with that left hand more and that's what's gonna bring that mushroom cap in and keep it from flaring out. Once we have our tuna can, it's time to ask ourselves uh, the primary question of wheel throwing, which is, are we on center? And the best way to check is to floor it to cheetah speed and then kind of just like look at it. If you didn't know that it was spinning, this almost looks stationary. And if I put my hand on it, you can see that my hands are totally steady with no wiggling. This is what on center looks like and it's very important that our clay is completely center before moving on to the next step. Now, if this were off center, even by a little bit, it would look more like this, um, where it's wiggling around like a jello, it's kind of crazy. If I put my hand on it, my fingers are going like, Boo! it's just craziness down here, it's like a party. As fun as this is, this is off center and we can't keep going if it's wiggling like this. So if you finish coning down and your tuna can is not center, what you're going to do is go into the exact same hand position. But this time you're going to focus on being as steady and stable as possible. As long as you don't move, as long as you don't let the clay wiggle you around, the clay will have to get center under your hands. Centering is really just your will against the clay's will. Fist on top, left hand hold the side, my elbows are down, my head is low. I'm leaning into it with my body weight and I'm just gonna hold it nice and steady until I feel it stop trying to wiggle me around. And then I'm slowly going to release my pressure. You always want to increase pressure gradually and remove pressure gradually, otherwise it can throw it off. Now that we're back on center, we can go ahead and make the interior of our pot. I'm gonna hold it with my left hand and let my thumb go across the top, right across the middle. And I'm gonna take my right hand two fingers and put them on the back of my thumb knuckle here. And I'm going to use my thumb almost as a tool and my right hand is going to provide the power. I'm gonna push the tip of my thumb down little by little into the center of my pot, keeping it smack dab in the middle. And I'm gonna keep going until there's about half an inch of clay left at the bottom of my pot. It's very much a Goldilocks moment. If I go too far here, I could make a bottom that is too thin, or I could even punch a hole in the bottom of my pot, which would not be good. But if I leave it too thick, my pot can be very heavy, it can be hiding secret air bubbles, and it might be so thick that it doesn't dry properly and it could blow up in the kiln. So that half inch is what you're really going for. And you can use any sort of needle tool like this to measure how thick the bottom of my pot is. So I'm gonna take that needle tool, stab it into the center of my pot until it touches the wheel head. And then I'm just gonna slide that same pointer finger down until I barely feel it touch the surface of my clay. Then when I remove my needle tool from the clay, the distance from the tip of my finger to the tip of the needle tool is exactly how thick my pot is. So you can use that as a measure. As for the hole that I left in my pot, I can just take my finger and slide it down the edge of my pot into the center to fill that hole up. So to take this from a bowl shape to a cylinder shape, all I'm gonna do is hold it with my left hand, put my thumb back inside the hole we just made, 
And all I'm gonna do is bend the tip of my thumb um, and drag it towards my palm. And I'm gonna make sure to pull it parallel to the surface of the wheel um, to open and flatten that floor. So nothing's gonna change here except for the interior. My thumb is gonna go in. I'm gonna start bending it. Very slowly drag it across the floor. You wanna go gradually so you don't just rip it wide open. For a basic cylinder, I like to use my sponge, which we established was maybe about three inches wide. Um, I like to use my sponge as a measure. It should just barely not fit your sponge through. Your sponge should sit on top, but it should be kind of close to falling in, if that makes sense. Okay, we are now in the donut stage. And now that we're in the donut stage, every time we add water, the center of our donut is going to start to fill. And that's no good because water will obscure the bottom of your pot and it can dissolve that pot over time. So take your sponge, soak out that water every time you add from now on. We are still on center. Uh, if you happen to throw it off center while opening the pot, which is entirely possible, here's how you recenter it at the donut stage. Take your left hand palm, hold it against the side. Remember, no karate chopping. Keep that palm facing slightly down towards the ground. Three fingers from my right hand are going to curl over the top of my donut. These hands are gonna to touch and push in together. I'm basically just making a little tunnel with my hands and applying a little bit of force to make sure it's nice and compressed and make sure we're nice and centered. Now it's time to do the most exciting part, the funnest part, but also the most dangerous part for your pot. If your pot's gonna rip apart and fail, this is usually the step where it rips apart and fails, but it's very normal. So I'm gonna take my right hand, it's going to be like a duck, okay? Or sort of like that zero from coning up. I'm gonna pinch that sponge in the center with my duck. My left hand's gonna be like a llama. My duck and my llama are going to face the opposite wall together, side by side. And I'm gonna take my left hand thumb, stick it on the back of the duck's head for stability. Then to raise the walls, you're just gonna hinge up and down at the elbows, keeping these animals parallel towards each other like so. It'll make more sense once I show you on the pot. My right hand duck's gonna pinch that sponge and it's gonna go down to four o'clock, so slightly past three o'clock. My left hand llama is gonna go inside of the pot, um, also at four o'clock, just on the opposite side of the wall from my right hand. I'm gonna lean down medium speed, squeeze between those fingers and then hinge up at the elbow, carrying your clay up in the air. Kiss at the top, and after every pull, you wanna recenter the rim. Finger on top, fingers on the sides. You're basically just making a little tunnel to hold that rim through to make sure it's compressed and nice and centered. Okay, I'm gonna show you that again. Every time you pull, the walls get a little bit thinner and a little bit taller. Duck on the outside, llama on the inside. If you need to tuck those ears down into your pot or hang it off the side of your pot, that's fine. Uh, but make sure it's your llama nose giving your pressure. I'm gonna squeeze that clay at the base and slowly carry it up the clay. Gentle towards the rim, recenter the rim, like so. Now, eventually you're going to reach a point where you really should quit while you're ahead. Um, you're gonna be very tempted to keep pulling and keep pulling, but there's only so tall the clay can get before it gets dangerously thin. So I recommend that once you have a pot that you're pretty decently happy with, especially if you're at the beginning of your pottery journey, um, just take it off of the wheel. So to take your pot off of the wheel, uh, what you're gonna do is make sure there's no water inside of your pot, okay? Because you don't wanna leave water in there. And then I'm gonna take my wooden knife and use it to cut the skirt off of my pot. This sort of flared out bottom section where it's sealed to the wheel, I call that the skirt. But we wanna cut that off because it's just extra clay. It's gonna make our pot look neater and it's gonna take some of that extra weight off and make it easier to take off the wheel. I'm holding this like a pencil. I'm holding the top of the stick with my left hand and I'm going to hover that stick above the skirt with this angle parallel to the you know, vertical of my pot. I hover above that skirt slowly cut down little by little until it touches the wheel head. Then to remove that extra clay, I'm going to chop it at a leftward angle and give that pot a little spin until that clay comes off. Then to get the pot off of the wheel, we're going to hydroplane it, put a bunch of water down at 12 o'clock, not inside your pot. And then I'm gonna take my wire tool 
For these wire tools, I like to take my pinkies through, put my palm over, wrap it around my fingers like floss, and pinch it with my thumbs. Depending on the wire you have, you might have a different hold, but the goal is to be able to make a nice taut wire that's just barely wider than the width of your pot. Press down with your thumbs, drag that wire down, keep it nice and tight against the wheel so you don't lose any clay off the bottom. And because of that water, we're gonna be able to just slide that pot towards the edge of the wheel, put your hand underneath, and then you can put this on a board or whatever you're using to store your pots. Ta-da! Okay, last step is to prep your wheel for a new ball of clay, spin it at cheetah speed, scrape that clay off of the wheel, sponge it off, and dry that wheel. Your new ball of clay and the wheel in your hands all have to be dry for that next ball of clay to stick properly. So to help you visualize what's actually happening when we throw, I'm gonna cut this cylinder in half. This is also a great way to check your wall consistency um, and therefore check your technique. So I'm cutting it in half down the middle and you can see that we have a pretty nice right angle here between the wall and the floor. And the walls are pretty much the same thickness from top to bottom. When you're a beginner, you're gonna generally have a little extra clay at the base that you don't need because your clay efficiency is not that strong yet. So what I wanna actually show you is what it looks like when we're actually raising the walls from a cross section point of view. Because I know when I put my hands in here, it's hard to see. So my right hand is on the outside holding that sponge and I kind of am using my knuckle with the sponge as a is like a shield. And then my left hand llama is going on the inside. To pull, I'm pressing out with my llama thumb and in with my duck on the outside. And I'm going to squeeze and lift like this. So you can see that my right hand is slightly trailing that inside hand. But that's what it looks like when you actually pull. And that's what's pushing clay up the wall. A few last pieces of advice for people who are just starting. Pottery is a craft, so the more hours you put in, the better you're going to get at the technical aspect of that craft. My primary piece of advice for people who are just starting and maybe are getting a little frustrated is, first of all, do not compare yourself to anybody else. The only thing that you should compare yourself to is yourself yesterday. As long as you're getting better in relation to yourself, that's what matters. As I said, I teach a lot of age groups. I see 10 year olds struggle and struggle and struggle for like one week, two week, three weeks, but then at week four, they have a breakthrough. So just keep going and try to have fun with it and don't put too much pressure on yourself. Pottery is really calming, it's really fun, and it's a great side hobby, even if it is a bit of an expensive one. If you have questions about studio tech related things like kilns, setup, clay bodies, I'm honestly not the best person to ask for that. But if you're interested, I can get my studio manager, John, to do a little tutorial for you guys. So let me know if you're interested in that. Any questions you have, leave in the comments below and I will try to answer them. And next time I'm going to be doing a video on beginner level, which is a little above intro level, and I'll help you with some tips and tricks on how to get a little bit better at those cylinders, at bowls, and just refine some of those techniques. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this has been really fun to record and let me know what else you wanna see. And if you liked it, please like, subscribe, share it, you know, all that good stuff. Leave a comment, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel, so um, hopefully you guys liked this video.